It's hard to overstate the influence that Buddy Rich had on my idea of how a big band could sound. I went to see him play live many times when I was young. I bought every one of his records, know every single note. So on the occasion of his 100th birthday in 2017, I was asked to write an arrangement in tribute to Buddy, and I came up with this. It's called the Buddy Complex. And this piece consists of a lot of fragments from Buddy Rich songs over the years. Little pieces. Maybe they're two bars long, maybe four, maybe eight or ten. But they are all combined in different ways. Sometimes they're inverted. Sometimes they're done in major instead of minor. But sometimes they're done in a different tempo or feel than they originally were. Sometimes they're different time signature. It's essentially a Buddy stew where I took this material and tried to assemble it in a new way and create a, a new piece from those individual fragments. If you're a Buddy Rich fan and you know his catalog, then you're going to recognize these fragments and hopefully derive a lot of pleasure in listening to the band play it. Now, first and foremost, the arrangement features our drummer, Ray Brinker, who himself is an avid student of Buddy Rich. It also features our percussionist, Joey DeLeon, who is equally passionate about Buddy. So let's hear a little bit from both of these gentlemen, starting with Ray Brinker, and he can tell us a little bit about how he approached playing a piece that honored one of his idols. Here's Ray. Hey, thanks, Gordo. With complete reverence, that's how I approached this arrangement. Buddy was, Buddy is my all-time drum hero. From the time I was 10 years old when I started playing drums, my drum teacher gave me all of Buddy's records and I played along with them endlessly for hours at a time. My parents would take me to see Buddy and his band anytime they were within four hours of our house in Pennsylvania. Consequently, these tunes and Buddy's aesthetic are part of my musical DNA, and I made a conscious decision not to pre-plan anything I was going to play on this arrangement before we tracked it. I wanted to be stream of consciousness and just be thinking about Buddy and try to pay homage to this amazing artist. He was and is the greatest of all time, and there will never be another. Our first soloist on this piece is tenor saxophone player Brian Scanlon. Here's Brian to tell us about the process. When I think of Buddy Rich, I think of all the great tenor sax soloists he had in his band. Guys like Don Menza and Steve Marcus, and how much I admire them. I had a short stint on Buddy's band, and when I stood up to solo, job one for me was to lock in with Buddy. So here I'm wanting to lock in with the great rhythm section of the big fat band. It's basically E minor, so I want to create some rhythmic and melodic ideas that follow the chord changes, play with lots of energy and feel, and try to build it to the end. I hope I succeeded. I'll let you be the judge. Here's Gordon. Our next soloist is trombonist Francisco Torres. Talk to us, FT. Thank you, Gordon. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that getting a solo in a band full of soloists is a big deal, so I really wanted to try my best. Um, I used doodle tugging when I got to this tempo, uh, just because uh, I've been working on it since I was a kid, and uh, at this tempo, it's really hard to single tongue. So uh, I've learned a lot over the years just to try to stay relaxed and fluid and try to make sense of the lines and not just fill space for the sake of filling space. But with Ray Brinker laying it down, Gordon, Kevin Axe, Andrew Sinewick, um, it was great. I'm at that point in my career where I try to be a little more complex harmonically, but at this tempo, you have to bring out your Carl Fontana, your Frank Rossellino vocabulary, and just try to hold on for dear life. So it was a lot of fun. So after the solo section, Ray Brinker plays a very Buddy Ritchie kind of fill, leading to the development section where Ray trades figures with the band. This section has a lot of twists and turns to it, and we wouldn't get through it without the coordination between Ray Brinker and our lead trumpet player, Wayne Bergeron. Here's Wayne to tell us about that process. Well, it's not a very hard process when you're playing with Ray Brinker, who has impeccable time and taste and musicality. I can always find his target, even when he's playing complex. 
rarely do I have trouble finding him, and I think we uh, we agree on where the time gets placed, and I think that's a, a good core to have in a big band, to have those two players for sure lining up. Ray and the rest of the rhythm section play so great on this uh, entire piece. There's a lot of things that could go wrong, especially with a complex piece of music like this. There's lots of tempo changes, lots of different mood changes and different things, and we kind of have to feel each other out and really be listening as a group. Fortunately, the big fat band brings all the elements to the table, pitch, time, sound, focus, and playing as a unit and listening across the, uh, the band to each other. So that's the only way you can really play something that's complex and keep it locked in like this. In my younger years, I always wanted to play with Buddy Rich's band to feel that driving force. I think Ray Brinker and Joey DeLeon bring us that. So as I listen to this now, it occurs to me that this section is like a free association journey to the world of Buddy Rich. And the only reason I believe that it works is because Ray Brinker is the glue who finds a way to connect all these disparate phrases in a matter that makes musical sense. So as we come up on the big drum and percussion cadenzas uh, played by Ray Brinker and Joey DeLeon, let's hear from each of them. They can talk about their thoughts, impressions, and um, how they executed this amazing segment. For the drum cadenza, I wanted to stay in the style of Buddy. There are certain trademark Buddyisms, feathering the kick drum on all four beats, certain patterns on the snare drum between the snare and the toms, or between the snare and the kick drum and the cymbals. I just kind of wanted to acknowledge some of that from Buddy. And also Joey DeLeon will now quote some of the infamous Buddy bus tapes where he is chastising his band. If you haven't heard them, please Google it. You got to talk about Buddy off the court, off the field. And he was a very colorful character with a very animated language, if you know what I mean. He could be harsh. He could be gentle. But all the bus rants that you hear these days that were recorded, it kind of delves into the type of person he was. You know, you grew up with vaudevillian parents who demanded the best, and so did he. And that's why he's still regarded as maybe the greatest drummer ever. After Joey's amazing solo, we wanted to pay homage to Buddy's single stroke rolls. He would often slow them down to the point of almost stopping and then speed them up gradually, adding the kick drum at a certain point on all four and would probably end the solo with a barrage of kick and snare and cymbal crashes. Indeed, the accelerando you hear right now is Ray Brinker and Joey DeLeon carefully watching and listening to each other as they coordinate those snare drum and conga hits, starting very agonizingly slow and then building to the frenetic activity that you can hear right now. Joey's comments about Buddy Rich's bus rants are interesting to me. To me, they represent a man who had such high standards of excellence for himself and also for the music that he played. Music was just too important to him. And when he saw people that weren't giving 100% at all times, people that weren't reaching their full potential, it just wasn't something he could easily let go of. And I get it. So, Ray and Joey in their solo with the five big hits that Buddy used to use at the end of charts all the time. And we go into this fanfare that Buddy used at the beginning of a chart he used to do. We use it at the end of this one, the conclusion of this arrangement. And when we play this live, by this point, the audience is just transfixed with memories of Buddy Rich. And also, I think, with respect for the tradition that is being carried on by people like Ray Brinker and everybody in the Big Fat Band. And that truly is a musician's real legacy. As you pass it down from one generation to the next, that's how you sustain, that's how you live on. And I can only hope that the Big Fat Band could be a small footnote in the context of the great legacy and career of the amazing Buddy Rich.